Hickory Nut Gorge is truly a spectacular place in our state. Rugged granite cliffs overlook parts of the Broad River watershed, home of Chimney Rock Park and Lake Lure. Cool, shady groves of hardwoods provide habitat for many species of plants and animals, some found only a few places in the world. It's also the home of Bat Cave, the largest known fisher cave in North America. As you can see, it's quite extensive. Fracturing of the rock has led to the formation of this very extensive cave system that offers a, a variety of microhabitats within it. Overall, in the cave complex here, we've had six different species of bats documented hibernating here. Bat Cave Preserve covers 186 acres and is owned both privately and by the Nature Conservancy. While public access is limited and Bat Cave itself is not open to the public, the summer field trip program operated by the Nature Conservancy gives those hikers willing to tackle the steep slopes a chance to see some of the unique sights in this diverse environment. Does anyone know some of the uses for jeweling? Poison ivy, yes. Another one? Stinging nettle. Stinging nettle, yeah. If you tear up the stem, and it has this aloe-like substance that you can rub on it. It makes it go away pretty instantly from what I've experienced. I have all kinds of good things to carry. There are a number of things that make Hickory Nut Gorge unique uh, from both the plant and animal perspective. Um, in, and in particular places like we're uh, here at Bat Cave where we are today. Its geographic position located between the Blue Ridge Physiographic Province and the Piedmont Province, you get uh, a combination of mountain species and Piedmont species of both plants and animals that occur here. Uh, the abundance of rock here in the gorge is, is an important factor that contributes to the wide diversity of animals. The varied terrain of the preserve, the unique rock formations, and the abundant rainfall combine to form a number of habitats for plants and animals. Here, two rare plants, the Grotto Allen root and the Bleeding Heart, are growing side by side. The rocky streams provide a haven for several species of salamanders, of interest to both curious kids and curious biologists. For example, the crevice salamander is found nowhere else in the world. The rare and endangered green salamander is also found here. Various uh, researchers have looked at parts of the functioning of the ecosystem and the role that salamanders play in it. They are primary predators of some of the smaller invertebrates of aquatic systems. They become prey for larger organisms. Because they are so abundant, they are responsible for cycling a lot of the nutrients in a, in a forested ecosystem and support the entire upper part of the food chain. Maybe. Protection of this region is vital for protection of these species. And if you don't protect it, if you come in here and you develop and you remove the habitat that's here, you're gonna remove and eventually destroy uh, the diversity and species that are here. Although summertime and daylight hours make it unlikely they will see a bat, the cave entrance is always a fascinating place for visitors. You can, you can look and see if you can see any bats from here or anything else. For the scientists who study the bats and monitor their health, it's a wintertime trip to see them. That's when the bats seek out the caves to hibernate until spring. And it's often quite an expedition to find them. I'll catch up. Bat Cave is part of a group of fissure caves, which form when the mountain's underlying granite structure cracks and shifts. Which is really just a series of extensive cracks within this rock, uh, offers a, a lot of different places for different species of bats to find the conditions that they need. 
your, your viewers may have a vision of a cave as this large underground passage that you can walk through and has rivers and everything in it. Yeah. <laughs> Not so much the case in North Carolina. Uh, there are caves like that, but generally in limestone areas, and we're not in a limestone area. This is uh, this is granite. Getting to parts of the cave can mean squeezing through what seems to be an impossibly small opening. This kind of caving can be difficult and dangerous, another reason that the public is not allowed free access. We've left the twilight zone where daylight uh, shines in and we're, we're into the dark portion of the cave. And this is the first room where we typically uh, start to see bats. What we'll do every two years, One, two, three. As, as relatively quickly, pa try to pass through as much of it as we can and count all the bats that we see. One, two, three, four pipistrels. And, uh, and then leave because once we are in here, our very presence is altering the microclimate in here. Our body temperature actually can increase the, the air temperature in the cave and trigger the physiological processes that start them waking up from hibernation. We try not to wake them up uh, or disturb them while we're doing the counts. In some cases, we have to actually handle the bat to determine what species it is. On this expedition, the team encounters the very rare eastern small-footed bat. It's an exciting find, as only a few dozen are known to exist in western North Carolina. And then you can just hang them back on the wall. <laughs> Many of the different species of bats that we have in North Carolina look relatively the same. They have brown fur for the most part. There are some some species that are different. There's a little projection that comes up inside the ear that's called the tragus and if it's really long and pointed then then it would be a northern bat. If it's rather short then it's likely to be a little brown bat. So the combination of the guard hairs on the toes, the color pattern of a light ventral fur and a, and a darker dorsal fur and a short tragus in the ear tells me that this is a little brown bat, Myotis lucifagus. Can you hear him yeah. squeaking? He's kind of mad. See, even a little tiny bugger like this, you know, here's what it looks like when it's flying around. So I'm looking at a seven, eight inch wingspan here. Uh, it looks like a much bigger animal than it really is. It's, it's much smaller than your average mouse. The body on it is. Is anybody going to panic if I just let this go? Yeah. It's going to fly around. Just let it go. It won't hurt you. People don't need to react with too much fear just because there are bats in an area because there is not any increased risk or threat associated with just having bats in the vicinity. Bats are responsible for eating millions of tons of insects every year. Anybody find any other holes that we need to look in? And if we didn't have bats, there would be a lot more insects, and some of those things would no doubt cause us great concern, whether it's just from the standpoint of them bothering us or from the standpoint of them causing us economic harm or potentially even health concerns that arise from insect-borne diseases or things of that nature. The work these scientists do behind the scenes underground and through summer educational field trips is creating a valuable addition to scientific knowledge of bats and expanding our appreciation of the remarkable place known as Bat Cave. This type of granite erodes in circles and right there behind that rock is a perfect circle. 